Our first nil-nil draw of this World Cup comes in this game today in Group D between Denmark and Tunisia, and it's no surprise this was always a good candidate to be a very low-scoring, if not no-scoring game, and this is exactly what Tunisia does. These guys, for those familiar with African football, North African football, these guys are the kings of slugging out these types of results and being very difficult to score on. Not a very high-scoring side themselves, but quite resolute and crafty at limiting the opposition's chances. Denmark did have opportunities. They had 13 shots, five of which were on target, but they were just missing that cutting edge today, man. And the problem with Denmark is even though they are a deserved dark horse, they are a top, I believe, top 10, 15 side in the world, they always have games like this where they struggle, they, they shed to break through from a dark horse status into being like a genuine title contender, even though on their day they can beat anybody in the world. And I think if Denmark had somebody up front that was a bit more clinical, maybe have a world-class striker, they could have gotten the full three points in this game. But Tunisia, this is a team, you will always see them in World Cups, who have such a crazy work rate. They themselves are not a team that's very star-studded. Tunisia produces very, very few world-class players for the national team. But this is a side that always uh, relies on the collective and their sum being better than their parts. And they come at you and they're a very high-flaring team. They're always well-disciplined, moreover. And that's what allows them to grind out results like this. And they had chances come their way, too. 11 shots, only one of which was on target. But I really liked how they approached this match. And I gotta be honest with you, Aisa Laudouni, he was all over the pitch today. He was all over the pitch today. One of the best players in this game. Did you guys see the nutmeg he had on Rasmus Christensen? Oh, my goodness me. It was beautiful. I love the flair. And for Tunisia, if there's one thing that I did not like seeing was that in the second half, their manager, Jalal Kadri, did have them reverting back to sort of like parking the bus uh, against Denmark. Which, from their point of view, might be bittersweet because it just shows that perhaps they were not able to play 90 minutes of high tempo the way they did in the first half. But I think the fans, you'll be happy with this result, certainly, especially if the France-Argentina game produces a winner. Uh, but you will feel possibly like maybe there was an outside chance here to really snatch this game and pull off uh, a bit of an upset here. Uh, for Denmark... It's back to the drawing board. They got a match next against France. They don't want to be entering that final game on one point, staring elimination in the face. It's very early. Tunisia, I think you're content overall at this point, heading into the next game against Australia. You win there, you could be sitting pretty with your prospects for the next round. I will say this, though. If Aysa Laudouni continues to play like this, I look for him to possibly get a sweet deal, get a transfer uh, at a bigger club in the next window. We will see. This is the World Cup. This is a platform for lesser-known guys to step up and shine and elevate their own careers. And uh, one thing, last thing I want to add is it's good to see Yusuf Masekni at a World Cup. The guy, the odyssey, the long journey is over. He missed the last World Cup due to injury. He's billed as one of the best Tunisian players of the last decade. A lot of question marks over what his career would have been. It's good to see him finally performing on this stage. Uh, for Denmark, some Danish fans on, on social media felt like Jonas Vind should have started in this match. But it's going to be uh, incumbent on uh, Kasper Hulman to um, address what was lacking today and, and uh, adjust accordingly for France because they're coming up against a team who, yes, they've beaten twice already. They might have their number. But this is a World Cup. This is a different stage. Denmark has to get things together. It is a disappointing start from their vantage point. There's still time yet.